Oh, man, I'm getting excited. You know what's coming up? It's March 11th. Oh, it's going to be great. We're going to be hanging out with Jim the Man Renahan. And a bunch of people for our first conference ever called Confessional Piety. And probably our last one. This, will, no. this might be the last one. No, no, no. This Why? is going to be the I, yeah, beginning. No, oh, the T4G is going to fold. I don't want T4G. The Gospel Coalition is going to give it up. I feel like there's because just too they're many see conferences what out there. Yeah, no they're, one and wants to all, be with us. And they're all lame. No, they're, they're all the same and they're all lame. Normal pastor conference. Lame. And, okay, the normal pastor conference, that's going to be good. Yeah, that's, Banner, why, why truth, that, that's why, good. Why, why but the that, big ones, Ligonier? the big ones, T4G and the Gospel Coalition, Yeah, it's the same people. It's the same boring people all the time. Oh, so the normal pastor conference is not the same boring people? No, it's totally different. First oh, of all, really? I'm okay. on the main stage. Okay, you? Yep. Jared Wilson? Yep. Uh, Zach Eswine? Yeah, all those guys. They're not on the big stages at the other places. Jared Wilson is all the time. Oh, no, Jared Wilson's small potatoes. He's small potatoes? He ain't on, T- he ain't on the, the go- T4G, and he ain't at the Gospel Coalition main stage. So you're saying because it's not uh, uh, Kevin DeYoung right, or... Right, boring. Or Vadi Bakum. Boring. Or John Piper. Boring. See? Damn. Yeah, we're we're getting it on <laughs> at the Confessional Piety Conference. It's going to be good. All right. So all you right. can skip all them boring conferences and come to something really good. It's going to be confessional, and it's going to show how confessions relate to piety or the life of faith and godliness. It's going to be awesome. Go to doctrineanddevotion.com slash conference to avoid the boring and get in on the blamity blam. You couldn't rhyme it? No, I, was, I ran out of get, time. Get, yeah, right. get in on the scoring. No, that's got yeah. way... No, right, let's sh- scoring. Avoid the boring and come scoring. scoring. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Christian Mingle now. Yeah. It's so weird. <laughs> Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Feller at Redeemer Fellowship. Oh, you don't even <laughs> say anything anymore. You don't even say anything. You you said you were going to be done by the end of January. What happened? I, I, you know, it's the way it is. Well, you got to get it done, man. I'm, I'm almost done. I got up. that last paper. That's it. Okay. Well, the last paper is like 30 pages. It's not 30 pages. It is like 30 pages. It is not. I've seen I've seen the other papers that other people have then done. Then you haven't seen them. Yes, I have. You've maybe seen one. You've I've seen, seen Scott well, yeah. Kalis's. No. You've seen Tom's? No. Who's did you see? Uh, Pastor Brian. <laughs> Look at Tom's. <laughs> well, yeah, that's Tom. Tom, who has two master's degrees, a ma- was it master's of biblical exegesis and a master's of systematic theology. Systematic theology. Yeah, yeah his is going to be thirty pages long. Yeah, that's right. You went to community college. Yeah, I, I ain't doing okay. no thirty pages long. Forget that junk. So Jim is uh, the executive pastoral assistant mm. and elder candidate at Redeemer. He really functions more like the executive pastor, if you know what that is. Uh, basically, the pastor who not only does shepherding and all that kind of stuff, but cracks the whip, and uh, he's the pastor that uh, the other pastors hate. So That's what's me. going on, man? Nothing, nothing. Uh, just, you know, getting ready for Philly. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to hang out with uh, Shylin? Uh, no, he, he has not responded. Shy. Shy. He is that why he's responded. called Shylin? Because he's shy? <laughs> That's exactly he's it. He's very, like, he's like, oh, I don't oh, feel hey embarrassed. Guys, no, sorry, guys. Oh, Jimmy, I don't want to, you know. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm sure he's really intimidated by... Uh, by my oh, he's got time for less in the Calvinist documentary. He ain't got time for our podcast. Yeah, because Cal- you know Calvinist that documentary is going to be amazing. Our podcast is eh. no. Yeah, we're eh. first of all, the, a Calvinist documentary is a one and done little. That's all that that is. We are the we we are the daily bread of your faith. That's what, what we are. We're the daily bread of Wait, your we, faith. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Yeah, you, you, Doc Devo. That's what Jesus meant. Well, I think it applies. It applies. I don't think he meant that, but I think it yeah. Okay. That. Hey. Oh, uh, so you're saying he did? He doesn't have wisdom to know what was coming? Uh, no, I'm saying it's an, a line of application. He doesn't have every line of application like intentionally given to the people that he's talking to at that time. Mm-hmm. I'm saying like it applies. It applies. Don't be picking uh, on my. Don't be picking on my words. All right. All right. What because t- words mean things. Uh, yeah, some of them. All right. So how about you? What do you got going on? Oh man, um, I'm, this year is so much better than last year. Uh, it's really good. Like, it's because you're not writing three books at once? Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, you're spending more time at home yep. with the family? That's awesome. Uh, you're going to have a vacation this year? I'm going to have a nice vacation this and year. And you toned down speaking? I'm getting asked literally every week. Well, Way the, more than the previous years. Yeah, because you're Joe freaking Thorne. We I get it. say you're no so to all of them. 
You have to say Super no. annoying. Why is it annoying? <gasps> restrictions. What, no restrictions. What, what are you I, talking about? Elders are the ones that tell me I can't take them. We, we t- well, yeah, for the protection of you and your family. Oh, I like you know, I like to make my own decisions. Okay, I like to like, <laughs> kind of do my own. Thing. I know. See, here's what Joe wants. Joe wants all supreme authority. Yes, I want to be the pope. That's what he wants. He yes. wants to be the pope of Redeemer Fellowship. Oh, we won't allow so him to better. do that. That'd be so much. And better. so we call him out and say, "No, Joe, you can't do that. No, Joe, Joe, no, yeah, Joe, because we believe in parity. Apparently, yeah, whatever. And Joe, uh, Joe hasn't been. I believe in popery, not parity. <laughs> Joe, Joe's not really bitter about the fact that uh, we've reined him in. Yeah, they're like, yeah, you can't be doing that. No, it's actually really cool, um, even though, sorry, guys, I'm already booked up for 2017, so uh, don't bother sending me any emails. But uh, And uh, you've already got some things for 2018, so if you're uh, thinking do of I? it, you better, yeah. What am I doing in 2018? I can't talk about it yet. Uh. I don't remember that. Um, That's why I'm the executive. But my wife is speaking system. like four or five times as well this well, year. Well, we can't so. restrict her. No, I know. Well, you should. Why? Because you can restrict me. Yeah, because you finally, you need to stay home, be home, help out. So what are we talking about today? We're going to be talking about perseverance of the saints. Awesome. Perseverance of the saints. Perseverance of the saints. You know what I like? I like that we're not doing like the cannons of Dort in order. We're not doing Tulip. Yeah. We're just kind of, every once in a while, we'll just throw one on there and be like, hey, let's just talk about this. Let's just talk about this. Here it is. Yep. We did total depravity sense. before. We have not done, you know, we haven't done the, any of the other ones, have we? Yeah, we have. We've done total depravity, unconditional election. Now we're doing perseverance of the saints. I don't think we've done irresistible grace. Did we do unconditional election? Yes. Oh, we did have Because I create one. the graphics. That's how I know. That's how you know. The graphics are always good. Actually, someone was asking me a big time, a big wig from a different organization, sent me a message like, hey, who does your guys' graphics? JoJo. That would be, that'd be me, son. Yep. Hey, what? You send me a hundo, I'll send you a graphic. A little, little one. A little one for a, a hundo? Fi- a five-minute graphic. Yeah. Well, then it should be a fiver, then. It should be five. Five no. for five. No, no, no. I'll get a hundred bucks for a five-minute graphic. I'll whip them up something. All right, what are we talking about? Right, right. Nobody's totally going to give me money for graphics. No, but please don't ask him to do it. He's got nothing I, going on. I, I'm not allowed. The elders won't let me we do it. We won't allow Elders him. won't let me do he, anything. No, you can't do hey, it. Hey, elders, can I go get some ice cream? No, no. you cannot. Okay, see what it is. Hey, but like, what, listen, I was thinking about uh, just kind of like, hey, it's like Saturday afternoon. Yep. I'm just going to go chill out at the cigar shop. Does that sound cool? Like, uh... Um, No. Oh. Wow. Sorry. Okay. You're going to need to go home. Uh, Hang Jen out with had my... Come... Yeah. Yeah, Jen said you hadn't uh, seen yeah, enough time at home, so... Yeah, it's, I, I do love being home. It's been really good. So we're going to talk about Perseverance of the Saints. So mm-hmm. um, what is that? What are we talking about? What is Perseverance of the Saints? Come on, Jimmy. Every time I... Don't start looking at your computer. No, so oh, were you is. asking me? Use it, yeah. What I was looking at Facebook. <laughs> no, you're not. Tell me what it is. What is Perseverance, Perseverance of the Saints? Perseverance of the Saints. Yeah. Uh, it's that doctrine or that understanding that God will complete the work and, uh, I guess, see to completion the work that he began in regenerating an unbeliever yep. whom he has called and elected to himself. Right. So this means once saved, always saved. Same thing. No, no, it's Why not, not? once saved. What do you mean, like once saved, always if saved? If you get, if at once you get saved, will you always be saved? Okay, but we're going to have to qualify I'm, I'm, that. No, 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 I want to qualify that. If you get that. saved, are you always saved? Yes or no? True or false? Yes I or no? I think the proof are, is in the pudding. No, so once saved, mm-hmm. always saved. Is that a true statement? Is that a true statement? See, but there's so much baggage. No, you've got to answer the question. It's no, yes. there's so much baggage. I can answer that. it. Why can't you answer it? Because I know what you're thinking when you're saying that. Once saved, always saved. I would say a real believer whom God has called and has saved will always be saved. So, once saved, always saved. You agree. That is a true statement in and My, of itself. I, I'm saying that no, you gotta whom say God has false. called is a true statement. Whom God has called to himself you got to be able to go he outside will. of that and just think, say, okay. No, because I know why I'm not, you're saying I'm not it. attaching it to anything. You, just, you're going to attach I'm not, it. I'm not going to. All right, fine. Yes. Once saved, always saved. As a statement is true. Yes. Okay, but. Let's see, here it goes. <laughs> no, no, no. But there is a way of understanding that that can be wrong. Yes. And that's and usually, the way I'm not understanding yeah, it. Yeah, usually, um, usually when that once saved, always saved is most popularly said most people just think hey when you when you are forgiven of your sins your sins are forever forgiven yep. you can't lose your salvation that's all that they mean this that's mean, what they mean you're not going to lose your salvation and so then i could go do what i want well some people matter. some people then would say <laughs> i had a i had a professor in bible college um say yeah i know a lady who uh was a christian believer born again 
and uh, and now she's an atheist, and she writes attack articles on the church for the newspaper that she works at. And I will see her in heaven. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because I think that's, that's I think that's re- I, oh my gosh, where's the charity? That's not charity. where's the love. I'm, I'm saying I think that's a, that is a I think that's a misunderstanding. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, so yeah, this is a guy that would say, "Well, once saved, always saved." Meaning, well, once you get saved, you can never be unsaved. Yeah. But they, what they aren't completing is the fuller picture of when a person is once saved, what are the consequences of that? Yeah. And we believe that the scripture teaches that once a person is saved, they continue to persevere yes. in faith yes. by the grace of God. Yes. Okay, so for example— And I think there will be fruit that is exhibited right. of that faith. Oh, how much fruit? Enough. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you have that on a chart or something we can look at so that we can measure other Christians by? Is that what you, you got? Hey, you know, I'm talking about their I'm their talking to you, fruit. John MacArthur. Why don't you tell me some more about... What uh, time John MacArthur? Oh, I know all about you guys and your lordship salvation. <laughs> I know how you guys are. <laughs> the funny thing is, like, lordship salvation, like, that's not even a thing for Reformed guys. No. Because it's like, well, that's, yeah, we... If you're justified, you're going to be sanctified. Yes. If you're going, then you're going to be glorified. It's a, it's a, that's not a debate that we're having as reformed guys. Um, and then guys like John MacArthur was interacting with guys like Zane Hodges and having this whole debate about, well, can you accept Jesus as Savior but not as Lord? Can you yeah. be a believer and not show any signs of it? And of course, MacArthur is right in saying, like, well, no, you're going to show signs of this. Is going to be, there's going to be real fruit. The 1689, chapter 17, paragraph one says this on the perseverance of the saints. Those whom God has accepted in the beloved, effectually called and sanctified by his spirit, and given the precious faith of his elect unto, can neither totally nor finally fall from the state of grace, but shall certainly persevere therein to the end, and be eternally saved, seeing the gifts and callings of God are without repentance, from which source he still begets and nourishes in them faith, repentance, love, joy, hope, and all the graces of the Spirit unto immortality. And though many storms and floods arise and beat against them, yet they shall never be able to take them off that foundation and rock which by faith they are fastened upon, notwithstanding, through unbelief and the temptations of Satan, the sensible sight of the light and love of God may for a time be clouded and obscured from them. Yet he is still the same, and they shall be sure to be kept by the power of God unto salvation, where they shall enjoy their purchased possession, they being engraved upon the palm of his hands, and their names having been written in the book of life from all eternity. You know, it's, 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 it's one of the most beautifully written yeah. paragraphs ever, but when you read it, it makes me not want to believe it. What? What are you trying to oh say? Oh, my gosh. What, what was oh that? Oh, my gosh. What was that? My six-year-old with a speech impediment reads better than you do. Oh, bonger. You're really going to yeah. say bonger? <laughs> bonger reads better than bonger that. Bonger reads better than me? I, I feel bonger like you're doesn't even know whose like dad is. We talk about bonger reads time. better than me. I feel like somebody gave you this paragraph, and you've never read it before, and you're just reading it on the spot for the first time. <laughs> Guys, don't judge the 1689 based on the way the fofo reads it out loud. So All right, that is, man, that's such a powerful. Yeah, well, I'm just mad. Which I'm is actually, why I the reason it. I'm yelling at Jimmy is because he knows I wanted to read that paragraph, <laughs> and I started to, and he stole it from me. That's why I'm mad, and I'm making fun of him and yelling at him. Oh man, it's such a beautiful paragraph, so powerful. And the big picture is what Jimmy that God actually saves. He, he doesn't just declare somebody forgiven, yes. and then leave them alone. Yes, he actually saves us. He changes us. He owns us. I mean, it's yep. a completely different world now. Yeah, he shall, uh, and they shall be sure to be kept by the power of God into salvation. Yeah. Right? Like, that That right there right. Is, is our hope. Yeah. It's our only hope right. in that it's in the power of God and that he holds us, he cares for us, he sees it through to completion. He who began a good work in you will see it through. You know, let's let's talk about the why okay. of this, and then we'll talk about the what it's not. Okay, like some people get confused about what perseverance of the saints is and isn't. Um, so you just you were just talking about this that uh, our our perseverance in the faith yeah. is not really our work. It's not really something that that we do. Uh, Otherwise, that's just legalism. Right, right. Like, it, 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 isn't that just that that is or it, synergism? If it, it be? Was, if it was dependent upon us, then it would not be the work of God. It would be something that would fail. If it was dependent upon us, it would fail. Yes, um, it is dependent upon 
uh, God's immutable decree. Paragraph two says this, the perseverance of the saints depends not upon their own free will, but upon the immutability of the decree of election flowing from the free and unchangeable love of God the Father upon the efficacy of the merit and intercession of Jesus Christ in union with Him, the oath of God, the abiding of His Spirit, and the seed of God within them, and the nature of the covenant of grace, from all which ariseth also the certainty and infallibility thereof. Mm. So you, you see what, he, what he's saying here. You will persevere, not because you're trying so hard, but because of God's decree of election. He has not, in other words, he has not just decreed that you will be saved, but yes. that you will be sanctified, that you will continue in the faith. That's right. And because of the unchangeable love of God the Father, God's love doesn't change. God's love is immutable. Yes. And so your salvation is guaranteed to continue. And you've got the merit and the intercession of Jesus Christ. You've got the abiding of the Spirit. The Spirit doesn't leave you. That's right. It's like once you're indwelt with the Spirit, the Spirit takes up residency. He's at home, and He doesn't leave you. Yeah. I think this is a benefit. This is one of the blessings of the new covenant. So we are secure because of the work of God. We do. Now, would you say that we are active in this, in persevering? I, I think of James, right? Like, I, I think there's... A, <clears throat> I don't think... Our sanctification is I'm trying to word it. I want to, because that's a problem. You got to word things right. Oh, Otherwise, I'm going to get you. I know. That's I'm going to get you. <laughs> I think uh, it's a, a result of the what? Spirit's work in our life. What is a result of? What the heck is that? There's Sorry. some weird like noise out there in the street. I mean, go ahead. Um, Come on, get on with it, man. You were starting to say. So do we play a role in our perseverance? Uh, I would say we have no small parts, only small actors. Oh, I think it's okay. a result. I think it's That's I, not, I think it's a passive question. result of the Holy Spirit's I'm work asking, of regeneration so in our what life. What is it? You say it is a result. What is it? Our desire to. Our desire to screed or, or to, to okay, pray. That's not what I'm asking. What I'm asking is, do does the Christian uh-huh. play an active role? I don't like that word active. Okay, that's so you're going to say no then? I'm going to say yes. I know, but, see, that, but I don't like that word active. I don't like yeah. that word because you're saying active role as if it's a causation. No, nope, I'm not saying causation. You, I think you have to no, say that. If you're saying if there's, no. a, if there's an active role, yeah. like in our sanctification... Okay, I'm going quali- to qualify it. I'm going to qualify First Thessalonians it. chapter 4. Okay, I'm going to say... This is the will of God. Shh. Your sanctification. That is that you abstain from sexual immorality. Uh-huh. Padau. 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 See, so this is no, the will no, of no, God. No, 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 another word. Your sanctification. And then he says... You work know out is? your salvation with fear and trembling, right. for it is God who works in you both to will and to work for, your, right. for his good will. So that's the part right there, is yes, it's but it's done by faith. That it is not you our works to, that you, you does. You got to be able to separate it out. I'm so, trying to separate it out, but that's just it. That I don't want to just say active role, yes, because I think. Well, that doesn't end the conversation. You say no, God. I know, but I know you. If I say, it, you're gonna be like, oh, I just faith, told you I agree. You're gonna say, I know. After I, I wouldn't say it because you're gonna say, oh, Fofo's work based salvation. No, no, you're still Fofo's you're, a synergist. Listen, you're still work, you're, you're still processing right now. So no, I'm not processing. You're, you're I'm processing. talking out loud. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy will all, sometimes say to me, he'll be like, I'll, I hate I'll be you. like, don't dude, say those. Dude, things. What, are, what are we do, what are we gonna do here? And you're like, I'm processing right now. I'm like, wait, what? You're like, I'm processing. I can't answer that. I'm like, we just stop it. Just Why are you answer telling the thing? It's the thing. You just, what do you got to process? No, here's what it is. Joe wants an answer within two minutes of asking me something. Yeah. But it's got big implications. Oh, just come on. No, it does. You, it has you implications. You process about as thing. fast as a Commodore 64. That's how fast <laughs> you process. So anyway. So, okay. True or false. We play an active role in our sanctification. You have to say Fine. true or false. And I'm going to I'm going to say true. I'm okay, going to say true. True. Now, true or false. Our activity in sanctification is the work of God in us. True. Yeah. So th- th- you, you can say both. But okay, I know. I just want to make sure you're going to say the both instead yeah. of just leaving me at the no, one. No, no, no. So listen, we play an active role. Like we kill sin. We live under righteousness. We deny ourselves. We forgive our neighbors. We do these things. But it's only because of the active work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Right, right, right. Totally, totally. Now, if we're saying that... Every believer 
who's been born again, every person who's been born again by the Spirit of God, that is, every believer in Jesus Christ, they will persevere in the faith until the end. And, And some people would like to say, well, it's not so much perseverance of the saints as if we are persevering it's more the preservation of the saints okay it's god preserving them um that this is the grace of god what does this not mean how do people get this wrong this idea of perseverance well i think i think what they say is the way they get it wrong is once they confess faith regardless of their actions after or regardless of their lifestyle after that they are saved. Right. So what we're saying is, and what the reform tradition has always said is that a person that um, has been born again, their faith will continue. Yes. But there's another, and some people would say, well, no, no, they're 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 They may not believe anymore and they may just uh, give up the faith, but they're still going to heaven. But there is another way that people get it wrong, which is um, that you will essentially meet a certain level of godliness, and if you dip below that, then it's evidence that you were never saved. I see what you're saying. Okay. So think about it like this. What we're not saying is that Christians cannot backslide. Now, what we are saying is that Christians don't apostatize. Perseverance of the saints mean Christians don't apostatize. They don't give up the faith, renounce the faith, and walk away. Um, but they they may lapse. Yes. They may backslide. They well, may really screw up. Well, yeah. I mean, look at paragraph three uh, of the and 69. Though they and though may, they may, though through the, the temptation okay, of Satan it. and of the world, the prevalency of corruption remaining in them and the neglect of means of their perse- preservation fall into grievous sins and for a time continue therein, whereby they incur God's displeasure and grieve his Holy Spirit, come to have their graces and comforts impaired, have their hearts hardened and their conscience wounded, hurt and scandalize others and bring temporal judgments upon themselves. Here's the important part. Yet shall they renew their repentance and be preserved through faith in Christ Jesus to the end. I think that's the important part. They shall renew their repentance. So we can we can screw up. Yes. Big time. Yes. How big? Big, big. Can we commit murder? Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. Adultery? Say, yes. Wait, wait, wait. Can we like uh, stop going to church and start doing drugs? Yes. Whoa. What kind of like... La- this is, you're a new Calvinist, aren't you? Like, no, I'm not a new Calvinist. Ca- what are you, you talking you, about? You can, like start getting drunk and stuff? Yes, a real way. Hang on, a real Christian can can become a, a drunkard mm-hmm. and a murderer. A real Christian w- that become uh, yet they okay. shall renew their repentance. Ah, that's what I'm trying to okay. say. Is so yes, that's what backsliding is. That's what it, I mean. Well, I mean, would a real Christian be prideful? Yeah, would a real Christian deal. gossip? Pride, pride's not a big deal. Would a real Christian be looking at porn in secret? Will a real Christian have lust in their heart? I, I you know I like to grade everything like uh, from <laughs> not so bad uh-huh. to really bad. Oh, okay. And Will a real quish, a real Christian lie? Uh, uh, that's not, you know, that's not so Will bad. a real Christian <laughs> hurt their family <laughs> through their uh, lack of presence? Yeah, see, people do this because you know they like to they like to they think some of these like. There are different degrees of heinousness, yes. I think there's different consequences. And for there definitely our sin. are different consequences. But they want to, like, well, those sins obviously are worse. Yes. Right? If a person commits suicide, I, I have a video up there that I did for Christianity.com about if a person yeah, commits suicide. Yeah, we know suicide, you're so big, big time. Right, Christianity.com. Right. Go ahead, Joe. Tell us about uh, your right, video. I'm not even going to do it. I'm not even going to do it. <laughs> How about that? We'll link to it. Go ahead. Instead, I'm going to read from uh, no. Lorraine Bettner. Oh, okay, good. The Reformed don't Doctrine take, don't take my, don't uh, take my Predestination. Phone. Check it out. He says this. Um, Though this doctrine of perseverance... No, wait. Here he says. Oh, it's really good. Uh, I've been practicing. Let me read it. Fantastic. Here we go. I'm reading like Jimmy. All right, here we go. Stop it. Keep going. Shh, quiet. Go. This doctrine of perseverance does Mm -hmm. not mean that Christians do not temporarily fall the victims of sin, for alas, this is all too common. Even the best of men backslide temporarily, but they are never completely defeated. 
For God, by the exercise of his grace on their hearts, infallibly prevents even the weakest saint from final apostasy. Yes. And yet we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the exceeding greatness of the power may be of God and not from ourselves, from 2 Corinthians 4, 7. So yeah, it's this, we will pull a David, we'll pull a Peter, like where we just don't even um, confess Christ before somebody. We're like, oh, yeah. I don't know this Jesus. Uh, and we just kind of go our own way. We have lapses. Yes. Uh, and we own that. But God owns us. Yes. And he causes us to persevere. Now, why does this matter? Like, why, 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 do, why should we even care about the doctrine of perseverance of the saints? Well, I feel like there's, it, it's our only hope, right? Like, I feel like it's our only hope that, because if it was left to us and it was us, like you mentioned before, we were going to fail. Like, and I feel like then you have no assurance, right? You have no assurance of your salvation because I think you would always be worried, have I done good enough? Am mm. I being good enough? Totally. H- have I, uh, have I confessed every single sin maybe the ones i haven't forgotten or have i i i don't know then I, then i think it leads into the sense of uh like having to pay the price for our own sins right yeah. when we start beating ourselves up for our sins uh yeah i just think there's a lot that's really that goes good to it that's really good because i i you and i know because we, we never would have come to jesus yeah if um, God hadn't converted us. That's right. If it wasn't God, God's active work in our never life. never would have believed the gospel. That's right. Um, and we would not continue with Jesus yeah. apart from God's work. Oh, I, I, I know you wouldn't. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't. I know you wouldn't. And uh, everybody knows I wouldn't. No, I, we know you wouldn't. I agree. I know. I'm just saying. Okay. You don't have to keep saying it. No, I'm just saying. I hear you. Wow. Like, yeah. I just, I, yeah. And I only believe in the grace of God because you are still here. I, that's, I'm, no, glad, I'm glad no I could be a teaching device. Happen. I'm glad I could be a teaching device. For yeah. You. So here's the thing. There's I, no way. I don't think that that the Christian life makes much sense apart from this doctrine. Yeah. Because how am I supposed to like you? You talked about assurance. Yeah. The lack of assurance can be devastating. Yes. The the, the lack of of certainty that I belong to the Lord can really create problems for us. And sometimes we lack assurance, and that's that can be a part of the plan. But why do we have assurance? Because we've been united to Jesus, because God's grace covers our sins, because he, no one can snatch us out of the hand of Jesus, That's right? right? Because those who may justify, he will also glorify. That's right. So we have not just these statements in Scripture, we have these promises from God about who we are in Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so if I thought for a moment that my perseverance in faith depended upon me, I would have given up a long time ago. But because I know that my perseverance in the faith depends upon God's sovereign love for me, yeah, um, I can actually rest when I need to rest and work hard when I need to work hard exactly. because I know that I cannot lose what He has given me. So I think that's a really good reason. Uh, the assurance that we get, um, you know, in counseling people, like one of the things that we have to do as pastors a lot is counsel people that are struggling. Yeah, struggling with their faith. How can I be a Christian when yep. I mess up so bad? And what am I supposed to do? And you know, what's, what's, my, what's my hope in this situation? Our hope is always the grace of God. And we, you know, can, can you see your sin? Do you mourn your sin? Repent and turn to your sin. God will renew your strength. You will continue with Christ. And because it doesn't depend upon you. It depends upon Him. And even just the fact of, of being grieved by your sin... I think is an indicator of the Holy yeah. Spirit's work in your life. Yeah, that's a persevering grace. Yeah. I hate my sin. Yeah, the moment you start, it. the moment you stop hating your sin is a moment of concern for you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. The man. moment it's okay that I can sit there and gossip or lie or uh, over drink or, or lust and yeah. I'm, I'm just, oh, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Then, then you got an issue here. And that's what I mean. The people that I know that struggle with assurance and they're like, oh, I just don't, how can I be a believer if I, if I don't have it? Like, they're all grieving their sin. That's right. And like, well, that, 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 that's the grace of God you in your that? life. <laughs> yeah, because like I, I never grieved my sin until I really was converted. Yeah, that I was just like whatever. I was troubled by some of my actions, but not grieved, not not broken. Mm-hmm. I wasn't disturbed. And now sin is painful to us because you know we've we've been forgiven. We know the cost. Yep, being the life of Christ and the love of God in spite of it all. 
So perseverance is an important doctrine. Um, what about some passages of Scripture? Like, where? what are some uh, some passages that you would point to, to for people to kind of get a, a, a grip on, on this truth? Well, I think that one, um, uh, oh, I forgot it now. In Philippians? Philippians 1, 6. Yeah, what was that? Like, he who began a oh, good he work who began, in you. Oh, sorry, I was actually thinking, yeah, he who began a good work in you will see it through to completion. But I was also thinking of work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Oh, that one, yep. For yep. it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. I think yeah. those, those to me are, are comforting. Also, I think Jude. Yeah. You know, Jude 124. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. Many of the biblical benedictions yeah. have this emphasis on, it's it's, it's also in uh, the, Thess- the Thessalonians, yeah. um, that God will preserve you to the end. That's right. And what we see is, we see it in James, you see it in Peter, that um, that God uses our afflictions and our trials. Yeah as part of the means of strengthening our faith so that we can persevere to the end. So those moments when you are really struggling and it's really hard and you're feeling like you're getting your butt kicked and you're going like, what the heck? That is part of the way that God is strengthening your faith because in those moments, what do we do? We hang on for dear life to Jesus because I got nothing. I'm getting my butt kicked here. I need need God's grace to help me. You hold on tight. Your strength gets stronger. Your faith gets stronger, and that's how you persevere. It's all by by faith. And then, of course, in Romans 8, right, this whole idea that, you know, those whom God justified, he also glorified. This golden chain of salvation, uh, the ordo salutis, right, the order of salvation where, you know, we are elect and then we are called and then we are justified and then we are uh, adopted and then we are sanctified and then we are glorified like these are the works of god that work together as salvation it's all one yeah. thing big thanks to justin bond of j bond media what does he do he does our editing he does our engineering and he edited that baller book trailer for me from moody publishers do you see that book trailer that's good. Beautiful. All right. So beautiful. What are you doing over there? I'm letting you do oh, you're the end. Doing I'm letting you do the end. All right. Well, listen. If um, if I told them to buy my books yet, I'm supposed. Jimmy wants. No, to, come on. Tell Jimmy, buy the books. Jimmy, tell me. I have to. I have to say. You guys got to pre-order my books. So the books are dropping March seventh, mm. and you can pre-order them through uh, Amazon. Ooh, and uh, or if you wait till March eleventh. Oh, if you wait till March 11th. And you're going to be at the conference, which you should be at the conference. Then, so you can, you get first them, of all. You can get them right there. Right, you get so one the for free. And if you're, you, if so you're, you, get, you get three for the price of two. If you're coming to the conference, you don't have to pre-order them. You're going to get one of the free ones, and you're going to get the other two cheap. Bam. But if you're not coming to the conference. Pre-order. Then you have to pre-order them right now. Right, so go right to doctrineanddevotion.com uh, slash three books. Order those. Um, and uh, and watch the book trailer. It's all up in the the what is it the the website the website Facebook. It's on the stuff. internet. It's on the internet. And that's a big thanks to Jay Bond. Jay Bond is also the one that makes us sound good. So if you have any audio or video needs, head on over to, head on over to Jay Bond Media. Mm-hmm. Dot com and he com. will hook you up. Also, if you want to help us out here at the podcast, you can shop at our store. We got all kinds of good stuff there. You can follow us on Instagram or Twitter at Doc and Devo. You can go to Facebook.com slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can like our page and interact with us there. If you would like to uh, give us some feedback, you can go to our, the Contact Us page on our website, DoctrineDevotion.com. Give us some feedback. And Jimmy promises to answer every me- email personally. And I will say, I, will, I promise to delete and archive okay. every email. Personally. I can't. We're, at this point, we're getting way too many <laughs> emails. We can't keep up. It's really hard. Um, and leave us a, a review. Uh, Jimmy likes to encourage us, encourage all of our listeners to give an honest five star review at iTunes or any of the podcast platforms that you use. Fresh Pod every Monday and Thursday. Fresh blog post yep. every Wednesday and. If you want even more free, awesome stuff, sign up on our mailing list. We've got good stuff coming your way. Later. Later.